must pick the right habits to succeed. According to the Harvard Business Review, around 50% of our daily actions are driven by repetition. And according to Psychology Today, most of the time, habits are created unconsciously, which means you may be adopting bad habits and not even know. Now in this video, I will show you five toxic habits you should avoid to be successful. What habits you should be doing instead, the simple mindset shift to help you avoid picking up bad habits in the future. Stay tuned to the end, because I'm gonna drop the number one mindset shift you need to make to start a business or launch your personal brand this year. Toxic habit number one. I already know that. When I was in high school and we would hit the block, I would often get into arguments for hours about the most meaningless shit. Basketball stats, who's better at Madden or 2K, LeBron versus Jordan, obviously Jordan. But whenever someone would talk about ideas that would actually progress our lives, people would look me in the eye and say, I already know that little bro. You could talk about a completely new subject. And because people were so unwilling to change, they would rather just say they already know. I came across this YouTube video of a creator named David McEwen, and he said his mentor called this the battle cry of failure. And many people I know never succeed because they thought they already knew. According to Psychology Today, this is due to what is called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is a common situation that explains why many people aggressively defend their opinions and their beliefs, even in the face of overwhelming evidence that their ideas and views are totally fucking wrong. This creates discomfort, so instead they choose to just ignore the new information by pretending they already know it. And honestly, I've been guilty of this too. I remember reading books for the second time and getting a completely different message. Because, you know what? I had changed the second time I read it. Honestly, it's not always about the information. Sometimes it's about the perspective. A person tells you something that you may have heard hundreds of times, but the new perspective leads to a new way of thinking or viewing things. Now, let's be real. We've all had a boring teacher who could make the most exciting subject as exhausting as watching a 24 hour straight documentary about library organization systems. And then there's teachers who present the information in such an engaging way that you begin to love these subjects. So when you find someone saying the information or someone smarter than you telling you something that you've heard before, before you say, I already know that, think about that it might be changing your perspective in the way you think. Toxic trait number two, lone wolf syndrome. There's no shortage of rap lyrics or movies glorifying the lone wolf who does things their way. They live outside the box and they don't need any friends. And I can tell you, if you wanna be successful, this is absolute bullshit. Now, according to a study by Zippy, employees who work collaboratively were 64% more likely to stick to their assigned tasks than their solitary peers. And another study by Very Well Mind found that groups of three to five people perform better than individuals when solving complex problem. So I had this friend who was a local rapper in Houston. He was telling me about how it was easy for me to come up because I had a group of friends who were on the same path. He specifically told me, I'm a loner. I'm one deep out here. And I looked him square in his face and said, that's just only cool for rap lyrics. Because no matter who you are, we need some help sometimes. And that doesn't always mean money. It could be motivation, knowledge, or inspiration. And while you may not see it, you usually have more resources to draw upon than you know if you just stop closing yourself off the opportunity. I realized when I start collaborating with others and dropping my ego, so many people wanted to help me succeed. So because I grew up learning that it was lame to be friendly, it honestly took me years to learn this simple lesson. So avoid being the lone wolf and make sure you stay tuned because I'm gonna give you a bonus trait to avoid that stops most people from starting anything. Toxic trait number three, the Allen Iverson mentality. Now, Allen Iverson is one of my favorite players of all time, but I remember him famously saying, I'm supposed to be the franchise player and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. But this mentality has destroyed so many people who could have been successful because it misses a fundamental lesson. Now in 2022, I remember starting a side venture with a couple of friends which had all the makings of success. There was only one problem. We rarely met to discuss the goddamn business. We thought because we were well known and we had talent, uh, it was going to be an easy win. It ultimately crashed and burned. Now, it started off great, but it didn't last. The reason it failed was simple. You see, what you care about grows. That's why success is often compared to planting a seed. Success is like being on a team, and you need to practice the habits of success daily, or you will eventually fall off. Now, we vowed from that day forward that we would never neglect the fundamentals again. You build off fundamentals, not feelings. After that, my business partner and I started meeting every day at 4.30, conduct health checks on our business. We even brought other friends in on this. 
And this would lead to one of the best years of all our businesses. Not because we made a ridiculous amount of money, but because we built a foundation and habit to create sustainable business. This taught us that regardless of how good you are at the game, you gotta tap in regularly. So avoid the Allen Iverson mentality of feeling like you're too good to tap. Toxic trait number four, personal development is lame. The very first personal development book I ever read was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And when I started to tell my partners about this, I remember getting told, bro, that shit is for lame. In fact, in the beginning, before I met the right circle, anything that was done to improve yourself was seen as lame. Want to read a book to gain a better understanding of yourself? Lame. Have trouble meeting people and want to learn how to network better? Lame. Want to learn how to grow spiritually and contribute to the world? Super lame. Any progress that wasn't being something like a rapper or an athlete was considered lame. And let me stop you. There's nothing wrong with being one of those things. It just forced a lot of people I knew into a box that they couldn't fit into. They thought if you weren't him, you just had to accept your fate. And it wasn't until much later in life that I learned that this is called the fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is the belief that abilities and intelligence never change. And people with this mindset may be more likely to avoid challenges to maintain the appearance that they have talent. However, the successful people I met all had a growth mindset. This refers to the belief that one's ability and intelligence can be developed and improved over time through dedication, hard work, learning, and perseverance. People with a growth mindset see challenges as an opportunity to learn, embrace effort as a path to mastery, and view setbacks as a part of the learning process. Now let's be real. If your mindset now was going to make you successful, then you would have already been successful. So you're gonna to have to evolve and grow as a person to get to the level of success you want. And once I got around a group of people who were about growth and personal development, it became easy. And funny enough, among my circle, staying the same is considered lame. Toxic trait number five, gossiping and scapegoating. Now I remember in 2007 watching the news as Barack Obama was about to be elected. And everyone was screaming at the television about how their life was gonna change because we were about to have the first black president. To reclaim the American dream and reaffirm that fundamental truth that out of many, we are one. And when he got elected, I heard everybody complaining about how this changed nothing. Many blacks believe Mr. Obama could have fought harder during the debt reduction talks to help the unemployed through the crisis. Then when Trump was elected, they began to say they couldn't get ahead because of Trump. The first 100 days of President Trump has been very frightening and nerve-wracking for me. It seemed like no matter what happened in these people's lives, it was always someone else's fault. If it wasn't for them and they, they could be successful. These people often believe that all rich people are crooks. Anyone who's successful is a scammer. You have to sell your soul to obtain a level of success or attend a ditty party. This is contributed to by two factors. The victim mindset and having an external locus of control. The victim mindset is a term that describes people who consistently see themselves as victims of circumstances. People with a victim mentality often perceive themselves as powerless and tend to blame external factors or other people for their difficulties. This mindset can hinder anyone's personal growth and responsibility. Now, on the other hand, an external locus of control refers to the extent to which individuals believe they can control the events that affect them. People with an external locus of control tend to attribute their success or failure to external factors such as luck, fate, or other people rather than their actions. People with this mindset tend to gossip about others instead of taking action to fix themselves. The cure to this is extreme accountability. In the book Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy SEALs Lead and Win, Jocko Willink proposed that we should take extreme ownership of our lives or take complete responsibility for everything in our world, both success and failure. And though, as the title suggests, this can seem extreme, I always like to ask myself a simple question. What mindset will help me the most? If the mindset helps you to succeed and accomplishes your goals, then adopt that mindset. If you believe it will make your life worse, you can ignore it altogether. But as I said earlier, most people have a fixed mindset and would rather die of failure than admit they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. People like this always remind me of Matthew 7, 3. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but not consider the plank in your own eye? I always take this to mean that instead of criticizing others, take time to see what you can improve in your life. You'll usually find there's a lot of work that can be done on yourself. And finally, a little bonus habit. If you're planning on taking any journey where you have to speak in front of people or on a camera or share your expertise, then you might feel like you're not worthy of success. And this is pretty common even amongst top celebrities. They often suffer from a habit called the imposter syndrome. Now I bring this up because if this video inspires you to take action, then this problem might come up. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where people doubt their accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. 
despite evidence of their competence. People experiencing imposter syndrome often feel that they don't deserve their success and attribute it to luck rather than their abilities. We may feel this way. You might think that, who am I to start this business or put out this content? Believe me, we've all thought this at some point. Because of social media, it's made us hungry for validation. But here's a quick tip. Don't do it for the validation. Do it for the one person you know the content will help. If you have a good message to deliver, do it for them. If you keep this in mind, no matter how much criticism you might face, you know you're making the world a better place. Now it's common to feel like overcoming these traits is impossible, but just avoiding the habits isn't gonna help you master your destiny. So watch this video right here where I explain how to take control of your life and be successful.